Obviously, you have your panic button right there. Now, these side view mirrors are power adjustable. They're heated and they have the turn signal indicator built in. They're not power folding, they're manually folding as you saw right there. And by the way, that is a proximity key with the walk away feature. And as I mentioned, you have power sliding side doors. This is gonna be the case on both sides. We'll work our way around to the rear. We're gonna have the tail lights back here, a nice look to finish things off, the rear window wiper. And once again, you are going to have a power rear lift gate here. If you want the hands-free feature where if you walk up and your hands are full, all you have to do is kick your foot under the bumper like this, you'd have to go to the Elite trim level to have that option. Take a look. Somebody might come and say, Tom, that's not a 2024. Well, there you go. You can see very clearly that it is indeed a 2024. And how about our MPGs? 19 city, 28 highway, 22 combined, and four and a half gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And for those who might say, well, you told us what year it is and you showed us that it really is a 24, Tom, but tell us how much gas it can hold. 19 and a half gallons is the size of your gas tank. If you want to tow with your Odyssey, it will tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds. And we're looking at 32.8 up to 140.7, up to 144.9 cubic feet of cargo capacity. All three of those middle row seats will come out the middle seat right there, uh, probably about 40 pounds. The outer seats, I'm guessing 70 to 80 pounds, a little heavy. So, you know, work accordingly as you need to with that. If you need some help, get some help with that. And you do have the stowing magic rear seats back here. So let me show you how that works. You can actually take these both and have them up in place, just like this. They do recline back, by the way, not that much, but about like that. And then to put them back in place, as you can see, is pretty simple. But how do you stow them? Well, it's pretty easy to do that too. Just like that, a very simple process with both. Now, obviously this one's a little bit more challenging to do, but not a big deal, especially if you have both hands free. One-handed, it is a little bit of a challenge. And we also have some storage back here. There is a power outlet. And over here on this side, a little more storage. Now, in case you haven't looked at an Odyssey for a couple of years, I think it was as of 2021 or 2022. I don't remember for sure. I think it was 21. Honda did away with the Honda Vac that you can have on the Elite trim level. I don't remember if it came with the Touring trim level or not because it's been a little while. But one way or another, if you're wondering about that, it really doesn't matter what trim level because it's no longer available as of a couple of years ago. And that was really the only major change that we've seen to the Odyssey in quite a while. And you've seen that we have the power sliding doors here on each side. I know I've only shown you one side, but let's talk a little bit about functionality as far as everything else goes. You can use the lever right here that tilts the seat forward and allows it to slide forward so that we can gain access to the third row. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, the good thing here is that even with the seats all the way back, there's still a good bit of leg room. I'm very comfortable back here. There's a lot of room in this rear or third seat area. But the outboard seats both slide back and forth, and so they can actually be moved up quite a bit to increase leg space even more. And there are a couple of cup holders back here, an air conditioning vent, you can see the headphone jack, and everything is mirrored on both sides with the exception of the 12 volt power outlet right there. I'll pan over here and try not to do it too quickly. There we go. You can see you don't have the 12 volt over here, but you have everything else, the headphone jack and the 12 volt, as well as the air conditioning vent and cup holders. And when it comes to closing these doors, well, we can close them with the button right there. You can also use the handle for your middle row seat passengers right here. And there is a lot going on in the way of storage capacity right here. We've got the rear seat pockets right here. You also have the cup holders there. You're gonna have some connectivity options down below. And the entertainment system is here. So that's very beneficial. 
You do have a third zone of climate control back here, two zones in the front, single zone here in the rear. And the control center, the command center, whatever you want to call it, or just the control panel is right there above the door. And you can see that the privacy shades are also here. Now there's not only a privacy shade on these power side doors, but also on those windows in the rear. They're just not in place right now. And we're gonna take a look into the front seat, starting with the passenger side door here. But for those who are saying, okay, Tom, I like what I see, but am I going to like the price? Well, you'll have to tell me what you think about that because the sticker price is $46,930. So let's see what else you get besides what I've shown you. As far as the armrest goes right here, it seems to be pretty comfortable. I haven't had a lot of time to leave my arm up there for very long, but definitely plenty of room. You have the upper and the lower door bins, and you'll also have power seats for the driver and the passenger, both are heated. We'll hop inside here and take a look at what we have as far as additional space goes. Obviously, you're going to have the glove box here, plenty of space within that area. And if you're wondering what this is, Holmes Honda has installed wheel locks on your wheels. So there's gonna be one lug nut, which is going to look like that. And this is your wheel lock key. That's inside of the bag. You insert that into the tire iron and that allows you to take that off. And you'll have the push button shifter here, conveniently out of the way, by the way, but tell me what you think about that. Do you think there should be something else in the future with the Odyssey? And you can see right here, these are the controls for the heated seats. You can see what else is up here. Pretty easy to deal with. You have the pass through right here. Also the hangers right here for grocery bags or whatever kind of bags anybody wants to put up here. And I think everybody pretty much knows what else is here. By the way, you do have all of your cables and a couple of pairs of headphones that are going to come with the Odyssey. Plenty of space within that center console. And some like it and some don't. You'll have to tell me what you think about that. But here are the armrests that are available on these seats right now. And by the way, I didn't mention it earlier. You do have a sunroof up here. It is a conventional size sunroof and you'll manage that right up here in this area. It does a slide and tilt open. And looking in through the driver's side door, well, obviously you'll have a few extra buttons and switches here for controlling those side view mirrors and all of the windows on all of the different doors. You can open and close the power sliding doors here, the power lift gate back there. Everything else here, I think you pretty much know what it is. That lever, you can drop that there to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And we'll hit our push button start here and let you see what comes up on the dash here. Pretty simplistic, but easy to deal with. Nothing complicated where that matter is concerned, but it looks nice. It's definitely going to get the job done. It will be interesting to see what happens for 2025 if this model is fully redesigned, and I sure expect it to be. We'll just have to wait and find out. You can control your headlights and fog lights, all the lighting on the exterior of the vehicle right here, and also the front and rear window wipers here. There are paddle shifters for controlling the 10-speed automatic transmission, as well as your steering wheel matic controls. And here is the infotainment screen. And once again, I don't know if I said it earlier in the video, so maybe I'm not saying it once again. Maybe I'm saying it for the first time. That flickering effect has to do with my camera. So just in case you were wondering, that is not really happening. And you can see that you have cabin watch right here. So you can actually see what's going on back there. It won't flicker like that, but that's what's there. There's a lot here, a lot of great features, a lot of great functionality. Navigation is built in but you can still pair your smartphone. And when you go into reverse, you have the multi-view rear view camera, three different views where that is concerned, just in case you were curious. And if you're wanting to turn idle stop or the auto stop start feature off, there's where you're going to do that. You have your snow mode, econ mode right here, and then drive and sport mode will be selected right here on the shifter. Okay, let's get out on the road for a quick test drive with the Odyssey. What is it like to drive? Well, it's a minivan. It may not handle like a sports car. No such thing as a sport minivan, at least not that I know of out there. And while you do have the Odyssey Sport, it's not really meant to be high performance or handles in a sporty manner. But I'll tell you what, 
for a minivan, it drives well, it rides well. The seats themselves seem to be very comfortable, at least as far as the driver's seat goes here. I feel like I could drive for a really long time and be comfortable enough to have no problems at all. So that's a good thing. Obviously, you have plenty of space, plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom, and being that I'm only speaking from my experience here in the front seat, in the driver's seat, well, not a problem. And you know what? We have a vehicle that's driving a little under the speed limit right here, so we're going to go around them, and that's not a problem at all. So that's always good news plenty of power to get down the road, at least with me in the vehicle. And keep in mind, I only weigh 175 pounds, so not a lot of weight here. It would be interesting to try something uh, as far as seeing what it's like to get up to highway speed with a full load of passengers, maybe a good load of cargo back there, because there's just so much space back there. And that is one of the big advantages of the Odyssey, is while it's a little more effort, to take the middle row seats out. Obviously, the rear seats back there just stow right down into the floor, so that makes everything so easy to deal with. But the good thing is that you pretty much have a flat floor. Now, one thing I have been asked about a couple of times has to do with when you take those middle row seats out, the floor in that area is not completely flat where everything mounts down there with the seats, it's not such an issue that it's gonna cause an issue. It's not going to really cause any problems with being able to put whatever it is back there that you're hauling or whatever the case is. So not an issue. Now you can't really remove all of that stuff that's, that's sitting down there on the floor. I've had people ask about that. I guess you could go to the trouble to do it, but it wouldn't really be worth it and it really wouldn't help. So that's good to know. And something else that I haven't mentioned yet in the video, the fact that say you were looking for a minivan to use as more than just a family hauler, going around town, vacations, all that kind of stuff. What if you wanted to use the Odyssey as a work van or a delivery van? It will do great for those things. Plenty of space back there. So a lot of opportunity here. In a lot of ways, the Odyssey is really the ultimate multitasking minivan. That's one thing that really separates it apart from say the Toyota Sienna. And I know a lot of people would rather have all wheel drive. I'm always curious to know why they want all wheel drive, but some people seem to prefer that. But the Sienna, you can't remove the middle row seats. So that does, take away a little bit of cargo capacity where that's concerned. So that's just one thing that I've noted, but I'll tell you what, everything here is very useful. You have easy to learn and use technology. And if we do see a full redesign of the Odyssey for 2025, while the look of the screen will likely change to basically what I would assume we'll see, we see with the pilot right now, the way that the two used to mirror each other with the interior, you'll still have the same basic look here and pretty easy to deal with. So simplistic to learn, simplistic to use. So a very, very versatile minivan, that's for sure. Does that make it the best minivan on the market? Well, you'll have to tell me what you think about that. So I'm curious to know what you think. Is the 2024 Honda Odyssey Touring the best minivan on the market? Tell me what your thoughts are and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I'm always curious to receive your feedback. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Odyssey for the day. Don't forget, if you want to know more about this model, check out the link in the description of the video. I also want to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video because that does help me out a lot. And if you'd like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.